Nou, dat is al leuk. Twee uurtjes gepuzzeld. <laughs> Drie dagen. <laughs> Drie dagen. Long do, time to go vlogging. One point two degrees Celsius. That's not enough. Right, let's see how the tea is going. That's good. So, this episode is about a repair to the water tanks. As you saw in last episode, which was quite a while ago, sorry for the delay, we found that there was goop in the water tanks and uh, this was due to corrosion. So we needed to fix that and um, the builder of the boat and the seller agreed almost straight off that uh, uh, he was going to support us with that. Uh, so it started with a trip to his yard um, and from there we um, yeah, started the repair. So besides that we also did quite some other repairs which we will show you in this video. It's probably going to be two videos uh, so the climax will be later, but uh, yeah, let's see. All right, let's get a new episode on the roll. Uh, and let's start with my hair. We're still in Corona times and uh, it's taking way too long and my hair is growing way too long as is my beard. So let me get that out of the way before I go nuts. Um, this episode is about the repair on the water tanks and because the boat has to be hauled for that uh, we also took the opportunity to uh, to repair some other things like some through holes and some water hoses. Uh, we painted the other underwater ship uh, and I'm gonna show all of this to you. So I'm here the heater is on it's nice and warm so let's get started. Um, we started with inventorizing uh, all the through holes uh, and when we had a good overview of that uh, we were basically ready uh, to uh, to set sail to uh, snake so on a uh, on a brilliant day i think uh, early april uh, we uh, set sail we had looked at the route and we had to go to stavoren first we looked at the weather uh, here you will see the Netherlands and you can actually see a low pressure coming in uh, which generated quite a bit of wind uh, but fortunately I was with the Peter and Els uh, who are both experienced sailors and uh, were willing to help me out on this uh, weekend sail. actually went uh, remarkably well uh, the first part uh, even though looking at the wind it was picking up it was blowing four with gusting to uh, five six uh, and even uh, above that uh, so first stretch was to Enkhuizen where we had to go through the locks and from there we had to do the final stretch to um, Stavoren uh, the interesting part was it was downwind so it was uh, as we call Lagerwal in, uh, uh, in Dutch 
uh, and the wind actually keep picking up so by the time we were there it was blowing a consistent six uh, with gusting up to seven or even higher so uh, quite a challenging um, uh, quite a challenging sail in that sense because the boat is not really equipped for that we don't have a very small uh, foresail uh, Genoa uh, sail uh, and also the main sail was down uh, so that was uh, far from ideal but um, in the end we made it and uh, it was really good to have a beer uh, on that first stretch uh, we also went into the city we visited the Fraudje van uh, Stavoren and uh, prepared for the night and the second stretch uh, which actually would be a stretch uh, through the Fries uh, in lakes uh, a place that I sailed out of when we got the boat uh, it's quite tight uh, and it's all narrow, uh, yeah, like waterways, uh, so not really open water, so to say. And looking at the low pressure, um, it was still there and it was actually almost spot on on top of us. So we started the day uh, with <laughs> pretty grey weather and quite some rain and still some, uh, quite some wind in it. Yeah, because again it was uh, uh, blowing a consistent 5 gusting to 7 so uh, especially on these small waterways it was uh, quite challenging but uh, in the end we made the final destination uh, which is a um, a uh, mast maker I don't think that's the right English word but I will look it up um, it's called Van der Meer and uh, he is specialized in wooden masts for uh, clippers which is like really nice so there were quite some nice boats around so Sasha actually agreed to pick up um, uh, Peter and Els and drove back uh, from Snake and I uh, stayed at, uh, at the marina -ish, at the master marker uh, company where I uh, needed to start preparing the repair. So uh, first thing up was uh, getting the boat uh, hauled out of the water and then looking into the water tanks, what needs to be done, uh, what needed to be done, actually prepare it so we could access the water tanks. Now, it's going to begin. Tanks are open. It's now nog allemaal dicht gelast. Als in, zit gewoon de plaat in. Die gaan er straks allemaal uit, dus straks kijken we hier naar buiten. Dan gaan we hebben nieuwe platen inzetten en dan zou het weer goed moeten zijn. Zo, so, after a night on the hard, which is always a bit awkward in a boat, we um, prepared the boat for uh, the final cut. So to say. So, uh, uh, draw drew a square box and he said, okay, you have to cut that part. And from there I got uh, started. So, I did most of the cutting myself, uh, which is always a bit weird because normally I'm into computers. The question you can ask: Ben ik schizofreen? Of heb ik gewoon twee dikke? Ik heb geen idee. Ik heb wel zin in koffie. But in the end, it turned out right. And uh, looking uh, at the boat from the inside to the outside gave me a bit of a flashback to my old boat uh, which I can make a special on one day uh, but yeah, this is how it looked De zeewaardigheid is een stukje minder geworden bij deze The whole point of this corrosion is that uh, you never know how deep it is. So once the plate was out, I was able to kind of test that. I found an electrode that we use for welding and then I put it on top of it and I, I just hit it with a hammer like and I get, I, I, it, it went straight through. So it's supposed to be six millimeters of aluminum, but I, I, with, one, with one hit, it was, it was right through. So that was the point where I thought, okay, this is a good decision to get out this entire plate. 
Um, and from there, actually, uh, we moved on. So we enlarged the hole uh, because the tanks are actually, there are one, there's one tank here, there's one tank there, and then there's another one uh, to the side, which is a bit smaller. So you can actually see that back in the cut. Um, and from there, uh, I started cleaning the inside, uh, getting all the bolts out uh, and also sanding it down. So it's like blank aluminum uh, for the guys to be able to weld on. After getting uh, 244 nuts, bolts out, bolts, uh, I was ready to uh, to move the ship again because at the place where it was, uh, uh, it's where the boats are normally hauled out, so you can't put it there for a longer period of time. So we moved it in between two other boats where there was not a lot of wind. We also put a sail around it so that the welding could be done outside. It's aluminum, so normally you do that inside, preferably. But then we would have had to take the entire mast down. So this way, with the sail around it, it actually worked uh, pretty, uh, pretty good. So after another brilliant night, beautiful sunsets there, um, and a good breakfast, uh, Harry Koopmans from Koopmans Cascos got in and uh, brought the aluminum uh, sheet of metal with him to, uh, to put into the, uh, into the hole. If you're in trouble, we are gonna call Koopmans Cascos. Um, I was going to support with the welding by keeping everything on the inside um, from burning. So I needed some uh, wet cloth, cloths for that uh, and once they were in place uh, the welding just started i guess quite quite scary but uh, it worked <laughs> So what we did is we first uh, welded all the places that I had cleaned, but therefore uh, got uh, aluminum material uh, sanded away. Uh, those are places that we were not going to replace the sheet metal from. They are on the inside of the tank, but on the, uh, yeah, we almost call it on the, um, uh, on the zwaardkast uh, and on the uh, ribs that were in the tank. Uh, those we were not going to replace, but we did want to weld them back uh, up a bit, so there would be some material. Um, that was the first thing that we did, uh, and then secondly, we uh, we started with the uh, with the with the with the sheet. Uh, we first they first put it in place. And then they marked it uh, in order to know what the exact dimensions were. Having the exact dimensions, uh, basically uh, the plate could be welded, spot welded in place. And once it was spot welded in place, uh, it was welded fully uh, all the way around from the inside and from the outside. And when that was done, well, it was done. Basically the, the, the piece of uh, aluminum was welded back in. It was sanded down the, the welds uh, and where you could actually see holes, they re-welded it. Uh, I think um, it took quite a while to, uh, to do that properly. So yeah, 
the plate was in place and everything looked, uh, I would say, brilliant. So, and then you think we're done because the plate is welded in, it's aluminum, let's go. No, that's not how it worked. So the sheet metal was in, uh, that was actually done quite quickly. I think it was the third day and then the only thing left was painting it. So on the outside it was quite okay because we used Interprotect, it dries in I think six, seven hours and then you can repaint it again. But on the inside we needed to do a Sigma paint which was especially for water tanks. It needed a special grounding and then it needed this bluish goop. Gooped up for the second time. Wat lang is niet leuk. big issues with the goop was that it needed to dry for 24 hours and it needed forced air ventilation and that I did not have on board or didn't bring with me or so I was like okay how are we going to do that um, fortunately I had a heater uh, which you can also turn off uh, so it's not heating it's just blowing uh, and I had a box and I had a Home Depot nearby so I went to the Baumarkt we call it and we bought some flexible hose and this is what we made from it said before uh, as we were going to put new anti-filing on the hull and as the boat was out of the water we also took the opportunity to uh, do some spot fixing there were some places where I wanted to put some additional uh, interprotect on and uh, there were actually also some places where the, fit, the, the paint chipped off uh, so we did the entire underwater ship new anodes op het roerblad Nou, wat osmose zat, de stukken eraf gehaald en die een verf opgezet. En ook voor is het nodige verf opgezet met als hoogtepunt de punt. Ik weet niet wat daar precies mee gedaan is, er zat geen verf meer op. Ja, aardig wat plekken waar antifouling slecht was. Helemaal naar achter toe. En hier de plaat waar het allemaal om begonnen is. Ja, ja. Zit er weer in. Oh, and I think this went on for about, well, almost three weeks in total. We had brilliant weather. Uh, I could use the board to go to the supermarket and get myself a pizza. Bonjour. And in the meantime, the uh, air ventilation system was just doing what it should do. Blow air through the water tanks. Still rolling. While the paint is drying, I am waiting for the pizza. <laughs> yeah, baby. Um, but after copious amounts of painting, we, um, yeah, we actually, I fixed it. Uh, and uh, the underwater ship looked like new, like, wow.
painting done on both the outside, both the inside. So you'd say, bring it in the water and let's go. Yes, but there were some other things that we also wanted to fix. For instance, the through holes. So it would be a little bit too much to put everything in one video, as I said um, earlier. So we're gonna create another video. So this video took a bit long. It should have been faster after the other, but sometimes it doesn't always work like that. So uh, I hope to see you uh, next video, which will hopefully be sooner. And uh, yeah, if you uh, enjoyed it, uh, then uh, that's good. Enjoy the day. See you later, guys. Just another day in paradise, folks.